Hello, Martin here and welcome to another video. Uh, last few days I was uh, playing uh, with uh, these radio controlled uh, plugs uh, and uh, for a long time I wanted to create some uh, gateway, some uh, one uh, transmitter which will control all radio plugs, uh, garage door, uh, my remote controlled uh, projection screen and a lot of other things in the future. So uh, I ch uh, bought a software defined radio, uh, create a library for Big Clown, and I would like to present how uh, easy it is to uh, copy uh, the code uh, from your garage or from some uh, radio plugs. Uh, this uh, will show you how to hack uh, 433 megahertz devices with uh, on off keying, which is also ASK modulation or OOK modulation. And it will also show how to use Universal Radio Hacker. So let's start. Uh, so if you would like to uh, do the same, uh, you will need core module, uh, some uh, battery module, and for example, button module uh, to press uh, and to send uh, your uh, hacked uh, signal. Uh, for transmitting, uh, I use uh, this module. Uh, 433 megahertz uh, with some antenna on it uh, but you can uh, choose uh, any kind of module uh, would, would you like also uh, download and install sorry universal radio hacker here are the instructions and it is a python application which you just uh, download and run you can also install install it Fine, uh, and then uh, you will also need a uh, big clown two chain, two chain uh, which is a package of compilers. So you ha can download one exe installer on Windows, or you can follow uh, these uh, instructions uh, on uh, install it on, on the Linux or, for example, Mac OS. Everything is documented uh, in, in documentation portal. All right, so here's the library. Uh, as you can see, it is um, it is uh, not uh, right now in the official main branch, but it doesn't matter. Uh, all you have to do is clone this repository. So in Windows, open your uh, big clone toolchain command line, and you have to clone uh, recursive uh, this uh, repository. Okay. <laughs> Okay, we are cloning. Small JIT lessons. Okay, we can uh, keep it uh, cloning. Again, okay, don't forget uh, the recursive because this will also clone uh, other folders. So uh, now we can keep this and we can look uh, on Universal Radio Hacker, which is here. And the first thing uh, I'd like to make sure is if my frequency is right. So I will use this spectrum analyzer first, choose RTL SDR, frequency somewhere about 433 megahertz, and I press start. And this uh, waterfall and spectrograph uh, spectrum is displayed, and I press the button, and I immediately see the frequency, the remote is transmitting. Uh, if I choose, uh, for, I'm not a radio expert, but if, uh, if I choose, uh, not sure why it disappeared. Okay, again. If I choose exactly the middle, then uh, in SDR, uh, there's, there's, such, uh, there's one thing that you cannot sample exactly on that frequency. Uh, which you selected. I don't know why, so I choose a uh, slightly offset uh, line. I, I will click somewhere like here, and the frequency is copied to this uh, input box. And that's all I have to do in the first step. I can close this dialog, and now I will record uh, the transmission. So again, uh, RTL SDR frequency stays, and I press start, and I press the on button. Like that. Stop. I can zoom to take a look uh, 
on how quality is our signal. Okay, here's the 433 sign. So this uh, this seems okay, uh, and uh, you need to save this. So I will save video 200, let's say. And when I close this, it is automatically opened in the main application. Okay, the first thing I have to do is uh, choose the right modulation, which is ASK. And now I can try my luck and press auto detect parameters. Uh, right now uh, you can see a small smile on my face because uh, it seems like a bitland is detected all right. And also, uh, as you can see, every message seems similar, which is good, good uh, thing. So uh, right now I will focus on the first uh, packet and I can do uh, some basic checks because sometimes this uh, bitland is not uh, detected uh, right. So you can always uh, select the smallest part, the smallest uh, part of the message, which is the bit. And you can take a look on the length and the length should be similar to 700. Okay, so if I choose something like it's it's close to 700 microseconds which is this and uh, the second thing you can check is how uh, your bits are aligned so i can select this bits and i can take a look how it's snapping on the spaces and on the transmission if it's uh, if it's not aligned perfectly you can increase this error tolerance increase or decrease i'm not sure you you, can, you have to experiment with these two numbers if it's not detected detected all right okay uh, now uh, i can uh, move uh, to the demodulation and here is uh, the threshold i have to set uh, you can see the signal is quite clear so it doesn't matter when i where i exactly put this uh, threshold also, uh, there's a filter, which I can apply, but it's not necessary. Hey, something something did, <laughs> did wrong, so I will not use this filter. And now I can uh, switch to the hex. And as you can see, uh, the repeated messages, the packets, are, all are demodulated the same, which is fine. Uh, so you can be sure that uh, your demodulation is done perfectly fine, perfectly Okay, so I can copy this hex string uh, to the clipboard and I will remember this number 700. Okay, here uh, it's already the git, git clone is already done. So in Windows or in Linux, I suggest uh, calling code from here because it will also include uh, the GCC compiler paths. Okay, and project is opened, then open app application. And uh, here are a few things uh, to notice. Uh, first is that here is the initialization of the library and it's set on fin pin 15. And as you can see, then Sorry, pin 17. So data is pin 17. Uh, this is the, just the GPIOs. And there's uh, VCC on pin 16, which means I will turn this GPIO to one. And on pin 15 is a GND. So I put a zero here. Let's focus. Okay, and here is the other important thing. Uh, this is a button event handler, and every time you press the button, this function is called, and the function is located here. And this SDK can uh, can see if you just click on the button or if you hold the button. So right now, uh, I will put uh, the code here on the click. So bitland was 700. And the string uh, is, I will paste the string from my uh, clipboard, save it, and build this example by Control Shift B. Okay, perfect. There is build task, but it's not detected. 
Thank you, Visual Studio. Okay, it doesn't matter. We can build it uh, right here. So I will go to the project directory and call make eight for eight cores. So now after a few seconds it's built it. Uh, so I will connect core module uh, to the USB and now I can flash the code BCF flash. Is that easy? It automatically detects uh, I have only one uh, serial port on the computer so I will select this zero and it's flashing. So I can turn off this uh, plug and if I'm lucky right now, so if I'm lucky, then after I press this button, this uh, plug will turn on. And it is perfect. So you see that uh, I have recorded uh, the message and replied the same message uh, from uh, this module. I also have a remote control for my projection screen, uh, which you can see right here. Uh, it is uh, similar to these uh, radio plugs. And I've also recorded the signal uh, with a universal radio hacker. It is a bit, little bit longer and has different uh, bitrate. Actually, uh, there are two packets in, on this command, uh, which has to be sent with a small five millisecond delay. And I've put this uh, code on the event hold. So when I hold this uh, button, it will send a radio signal to this projection screen. Okay, and you can see it's working. So I can stop it and put it back with original remote control. So I hope uh, you've liked this uh, video. Let me know uh, if you would like to know more about this uh, hacking or universal radio hacker and see you in the next video. Bye.